my gosh. It has been a spectacularly gorgeous fall day, fall of 2020 day here and the collapse of global industrial civilization on this lovely Saturday, October 18th, 2020, somewhere in there. So, uh, <coughs> the little dog and I have been out there enjoying it while we still can. I have finally finished moving the blueberry bushes out of the way of the snowplow. What a, what a project that was. But now that the sun is going down, the sun is going down over global industrial civilization. I'm going to sit here and do what I do every day. And that is chronicle the collapse of various various collapses going on. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little Christmas elf, Sancho Panza. So anyway, guys, you know, I, I'm a little bit reluctant to uh, go down this road here on this channel. I do not make this channel a uh, an electoral politics channel. But uh, obviously, one of the big stories out there is all about, you know, that I'm, I think that I'm being ironic and joking. I don't, I honestly don't know anymore, guys, when I'm, you know, when I'm talking about, uh, you know, little things like martial law and civil war and Mad Max uh, getting ready to uh, crank up in this country here in a couple of weeks. And the closer we get to uh, election day 2020, the, the, the less I think that I'm joking about this and to the degree that what is where we are at this point, this dismal black point in American history as it relates to the great unraveling uh, of the American empire, I can't just completely ignore this story. So before I read today's chronicle of the collapse here off the mainstream media, uh, th th this is where I stand on this issue. Now guys, I honestly do not believe that we are going to head that civil war, martial law, uh, Mad Max, whatever you want to call it, is getting ready to erupt uh, in about two and a half weeks. I do not completely rule it out, but I do not think uh, that uh, the, the, you know these horror stories being bandied about on the mainstream media are going to come through. It's just the latest fear-mongering uh, of the day. It's the panic uh, uh, of the week. They're trying to sell newspapers. And th 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 this is my prediction for what it's worth, is I do think that you are going, that some people are going to die on November 3rd, 2020. I, I think my guess is I am predicting somewhere between 5 and 50 people will die uh, surrounding polling places on, on election day and this violence will be coming uh, from the alt-right uh, you know, anyone trying to tell me that Donald Trump is not trying to suppress voters, uh, but, but, but again, I don't want to make this a, uh, a, this channel, you know, getting into the election of 2020, which is an absolute sham. It doesn't make any difference as uh, it, it, far as, as this whole rumor about civil war. And that's the thing about it. It makes no difference. Whichever side wins, uh, that the, the story here 
uh, is, is not so much the actual bullets that are going to fly on November 3rd. It, clearly, it's what happens starting November 4th regardless of, of, of who wins this, that this nation is, is so polarized. Uh, I wasn't around in 1860, but I have to think that, uh, that this nation is more divided and polarized in 2020 than it was in 1860. I have never in my entire life, I'm 61 years old, I have never encountered the level of outright hatred. I mean, there's no other word for it, for pure, unadulterated hatred between the right and the left. They are both to blame. I do put more blame on the right than I do on the left, but they are both to blame. And uh, the, 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 as we're going to see in this story, what's going on with the left, and, I, and even to use the word the left to, to describe uh, anybody in this country is, is a joke in itself. But, you know, just for lack of, it's just a convenient term. I could do a whole nother video on the left uh, in, in, in this country, but uh, the left is arming themselves. It's more a defensive posture. Uh, you know, the, the best offense is a good defense, but arms are being taken up. I, I am meeting more and more just this regular, everyday people going out there and buying guns, as we're going to talk about in, in this article in a minute, that, that gun and ammunition sales have, have completely gone off the charts in the year 2020. That uh, gun and ammo sales in this country have broken all records. I'm assuming going back to 1776 that there are more Americans armed and dangerous on both sides of the political spectrum uh, today than there has ever been in this country. Millions and millions and millions uh, of Americans are, are armed and dangerous. If you're armed, you're dangerous, right? You are da you, you can't be armed and not dangerous. Okay, uh, it, it, it's that simple. We had 8 million more people go into poverty this week because of the corona panic. Uh, how many of those 8 million are arming themselves? And this is really what I want to talk about because nobody else is talking about this. I heard this in a rant recently somewhere else on the Doomosphere. Can't remember where I heard it, but this fellow whichever one of these doomers it was, was talking about this uh, documentary on Netflix uh, about a, a prison riot in Ohio back in the 1990s. Okay, it was, it, it was you can find it on Netflix. I can't remember the name because uh, I went and watched it after I, after I heard this rant from whoever this fellow doomer, whoever it was, can't remember who that was doing this rant. You might have heard it yourself, but what the guy was saying, and I agree with this fellow 100% about the metaphor of that documentary. And, and what that documentary in a nutshell, I wish I could remember the name, the documentary about the prison riot in Ohio. <clears throat> What happened in, in, in that situation is that a very few of the inmates really had what we call a dog in the fight, where I come from. And, you know, a, there were a, a very few inmates on the two sides. We'll call it the right and the left. It, it is a metaphor for the right and the left. A very few of them 
were the ones who set the match to the gasoline. Are, are you following me? The spark, the spark, the explosion was set by the, the you know, these really rabid uh, people from, quote, different political camps. You know, we're talking the Proud Boys versus Antifa. You know what I'm saying. But it was it was a very small minority of people who actually instigated the the violence. But what happened was once the match was lit, once the spark was set and this thing blew up in this prison, what happened literally overnight, I believe on Easter Sunday in this case, literally overnight, is that once the rumble started, that then the, you know, all of the pack in the middle of the bell curve jumped in and set off Mad Max, that the vast majority of the people involved in the riot did not even know technically what the problem was, what the original gripe was. They didn't care. They just took full advantage. The riot started and, and the cops were overwhelmed. And, and as soon as they felt free to rumble, as it were, uh, th that the vast majority of the people who had no interest in, in, in what it was that set off Mad Max inside this prison, they turned into rabid dogs and they immediately, the first thing on their list was settling old scores. It was vendettas. It was revenge. It, it had nothing whatsoever to do with political ideology or anything like that. It was, a, you know, it was just mayhem, just violent mayhem when, when, it, when they got the idea that there were no cops around to stop them. And this is an absolutely perfect metaphor and, and, and why I choose to cover this subject on this channel, this is what the aspect that, that I am talking about, that nobody, nobody uh, on the mainstream media is talking about this aspect. They're focusing in on the Proud Boys or Antifa, completely ignoring, you know, the cannibals waiting uh, in, in, in the background. It's like uh, I've been, again, somewhat joking about where I'm moving to in Florida. Uh, you know, the neighbors who are mostly Trump supporters, they uh, understand that, uh, that it is quite possible that we are heading in to uh, martial law and civil war and Mad Max beginning on November 4th. And they have literally, my neighbors in Florida, have actually identified these giant oak trees they're going to chainsaw down over the road where, you know, this invading horde cannot get in. And, and, and again, these are mostly uh, Trump supporters uh, talking, about, talking about this. They are not concerned uh, about Antifa out in the Point Lonesome Swamp. They're not concerned that it's going to be some uh, army uh, of, of lefties De defending some political viewpoint. Uh, you thought that, 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 that that's nowhere on their radar. They're thinking about all these damn tweakers, these thousands and thousands of, uh, uh, of these, uh, you know, unemployed, uh, just completely clueless meth heads uh, that when the match is lit, 
and, 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 and this goes up in flames, it's not going to be the Proud Boys in Antifa. It's going to be these tweakers. Uh, and, 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 and all of these politically disenfranchised people, the, 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 this mass uh, of absolutely clueless morons uh, who care absolutely nothing about anything except where their next high is coming from, where their next meth uh, dose is coming from, and, and uh, you know, where their next meal is coming from. And, and, and when the cops, when, when, when these millions and millions of more and more armed Americans uh, start realizing the cops are outnumbered and, and you have, as I say, eight million more people going into poverty because of the corona panic last week. And millions and millions and millions uh, of Americans, uh, because of uh, whoever that climatologist talking about this luxury holiday of 2020, compared to what's coming down the pike, that as more and more and more people become unemployed, disenfranchised, and downright hungry, this is the Mad Max that's forming. So whatever happens on election day, it's going to do nothing to the underlying problem. Whoever wins or loses this uh, pointless rigged election, this big distraction, it's not going to solve the problem one iota of the uh, polarization going on in this country, uh, it's only going to make it worse no matter who wins or loses this BS election. <coughs> it has nothing to do with it. The problem is only going to get worse. More and more and more Americans are going to arm themselves. And uh, there, anybody studying uh, the collapse of civilization uh, 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 understands this. And this is definitely a chronicle of the collapse that we're witnessing. So anyway, I just used up uh, an entire rant. I should probably make this two of them, but I'm too lazy to get up and uh, so I'm gonna I, I'm gonna plow on with this. I'm gonna put the link on here from Reuters News you, from right here at Yahoo News. You can go on and read this story yourself uh, from good old Reuters News. U.S. gun sales soar amid pandemic, social unrest, and election fears. And uh, I, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I encourage you to do so. You, you know, it, it, it starts out by looking at some 44-year-old single mother right down the street from me in Fishkill, New York, uh, who bought a shotgun a few weeks ago. Uh, and she has uh, applied for a, a pistol permit constantly hunts for increasingly scarce ammunition, making three trips weekly to a local wa Walmart, quote, they're always out, meaning you can't find ammunition on the shelves. I've been getting comments from people uh, about this. You cannot find handguns and ammo on the shelves right now. Uh, like legions of other first-time buyers who are contributing to record sales for the U.S. gun industry this year, Garland's decision to take up arms is driven in part by disturbing news about the corona panic, social unrest over police killings, and a potentially contested election that many fear could spark violence. Surges, 
Surges in U.S. firearm sales have, in recent decades, been predictably driven by events sparking fears of impending gun control uh, legislation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, industry experts and academics who study gun ownership say such surges in the past came largely among the gun industry's core base of white male politically conservative customers who often already owned one or multiple guns. But that market is widening this year to include a new rush of first-time gun buyers, including many women, minoritized, and politically liberal buyers who once would not have considered gun ownership, according to Reuters interviews with more than a dozen industry experts, academics, and gun store uh, owners. Um, this is Dan Eldridge, a gun dealer somewhere in Illinois. Quote, people who don't normally think about firearms are being forced to contemplate something outside their universe. Close quote. Uh, the number of first-time gun buyers has skyrocketed this year, according to industry analysts, trade groups, and the CEO of major gun manufacturers. Oh boy, I hope, that, I hope this article comes back. My computer just ate this article. I have to find my place again. Uh, <clears throat> Smith & Wesson uh, it's, I, I, this, this is Smith & Wesson uh, CEO uh, Mark Peter Smith. Uh, Smith estimates that firearms neophytes accounted for about 40% of sales this year, an estimate he called conservative and double the national average in past years. Uh, a spokesman for Sportsman Warehouse said the co his company estimated that 5 million people uh, purchased firearms for the first time across the industry in the first seven months of the year. That matches a recent figure put out by the National Shooting Sports Foundation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Walmart acknowledged supply shortages uh, but provided no details of gun and ammunition sales or inventory, I bet. Uh, here, then they, so then they interview, so here's one, Bailey Beacon, age 61, who lives in Riverdale, New York, describes herself as a white, politically liberal, middle-class woman. Uh, she started taking shooting lessons this summer, she said, because, quote, Whichever way this election goes, it could get really scary, and it could get bloody. I just feel like it is a powder keg. I want to be armed and dangerous. And now we can welcome 61-year-old Bailey Beacon as the one of the newest members newest Americans to be armed and dangerous. Uh, it's, you know, it's tough to track down, uh, you know, really concise estimates. The FBI's National Criminal Background Check System showed a 41% increase in activity during the first nine months of this year compared to the same period last year, which was in itself a record. 
uh, with 28.8 million background checks through the end of September, this year's surge has already surpassed last year's all-time high of 28.4 million. Less than 1% of applicants are denied their, you know, their permits to buy a firearm. Eight of the top 10 all-time weeks for background checks have happened this year, uh, according to records going back to 1998. Uh, the top month so far was June. Uh, shares of Smith and Wesson have soared 131%. If you want to make money from the collapse of society, invest in Smith and Wesson 131%. Uh, this year, Ruger up 59%. Uh, these historically high sales are adding millions of weapons to a nation that already has more guns than people. Uh, the Geneva-based Small Arms Survey estimates the number of U.S. guns at 393 million back in 2017. 393 million which dwarfed the next highest totals of 71 million in India and 50 million in China, countries that both have populations four times the size of the U.S. Uh, aside from rising concerns over street violence related to political unrest, surging gun sales can translate to more routine gun deaths. Uh, Harvard professor David Hemway say there is overwhelming evidence that buying a gun greatly increases a household's risk of suicide. Uh, yeah, shooting accidents and violence against a domestic partner, and you better believe that suicides are, uh, are ramping up. Uh, with 8 million more people going into, uh, into poverty this last week and going into the holidays, uh, suicides are, are, are going to start matching. My guess is the number of people dying by suicide uh, in, in the next two years, more people under the age of 50 will die by suicide than will die f directly from the coronavirus. That suicide I is going to kill more people under 50. Sure as hell more people under 35 are going to die by putting a bullet through their head or some other form. Uh, thanks to the corona panic. I'm sorry. I, uh, the uh, the uh, luxury holiday we're taking in 2020. And of course, uh, you will see more and more uh, domestic uh, disturbances ending in death. Uh, this year's historic demand has forced buyers and sellers to get creative in finding weapons and ammo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so who is buying? Uh, gun shop owners in interviews reported a rush of interest from people who have never considered owning a gun before, often from outside the gun industry's con traditional customer base of conservative white males. Uh, here is, they're looking at first time gun buyer, a black, black female and registered Democrat uh, that they 
interview uh, here. Uh, here they interview a, a fellow who is Jewish and politically conservative. Um, nearly half of white males in America now own a gun compared to about a fourth of non-white men. Yes. Uh, it is clear that deep political and racial divisions in this tumultuous year are driving up firearm sales. Uh, in these tense times, one, one of these people who talk about this kind of stuff said buyers across the ideological spectrum view themselves as the good guys protecting themselves from the bad guys. Yeah, so all the good guys need to go out and buy a gun. Uh, and then they wind up in Eldridge, Illinois, uh, in suburban Chicago. Um, Eldridge is the epicenter of U.S. gun buying, driven in part by spikes of violence in Chicago and incendiary political rhetoric. Uh, Illinois is the top state for background checks with 5.6 million through the end of September uh, compared to 4.9 million last year and 2.8 million in 28, quoting this gun shop owner, quote, you have people sitting in their high-rise apartments and seeing the Walgreens store they go to every day get looted. And these people looting the neighborhood Walgreens are not doing it with a political ideology. Uh, let's cut this political correctness crap. Uh, I need to be real careful. Uh, you know, go look at those videos of that riot in Chicago's, um, what they call that, the Miracle Mile, when they were raising the drawbridges a few weeks ago. Those were not political ideologues. They were savages. They were Mad Max savages on a rampage. Uh, you know, Bloomingdale's today, your living room tomorrow, and uh, so anyway, that's why I need to get to Florida to get to the end of my little dirt road in the Point Lonesome Swamp while I still can before my neighbors uh, saw down the oak trees over the road. Anyway. I am going to wrap this up and uh, get out there and buy a gun and some ammo while you still can. Good luck on that. Are you ready for your dinner now? All this ranting. Just for the record, I do not own a gun. I have never owned a gun. I have never shot a gun. I am an embarrassment to the southern white male image. This southern white male has never shot a gun in his life. I think it's safe to say I will never own a gun, but come back and talk to me uh, a year from now. Bye, guys.